Hi, this is Anthony. Welcome back to my show. As always, before I begin, please click the subscribe button below. It really helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. Thanks so much. I recently done a couple of videos on Verizon and how it's done relative to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I showed that Verizon has done respectably over the long term and pays a fairly high dividend. I've also looked at AT&T when doing my research for those episodes, but didn't cover AT&T in those episodes. That's what I wanted to do today, and I'm barely going to look at the performance of AT&T as a stock and not even look at its fundamentals in this episode. All I want to do is consider their dividend and its high yield. And I'll tell you what my thesis is. Do not chase high dividends. A year or two ago, there was a lot of advice from people that I respect on YouTube where they would often flippantly say that they could just put all of their money in AT&T and live off of the high yield. But life doesn't work out that way. And in fact, AT&T eventually cut their dividend, just as I predicted. Let's look at a chart of their recent dividends. Here you see that it went from 50 cents to 51 cents for about four quarters. And then for about two years, that is eight quarters, it was 52 cents per quarter. And that was yielding between 6.9 and a 7.7% dividend yield relative to the price of a share of their stock. But then just as I predicted, there was a drastic cut in the second quarter of this year where the quarterly dividend was cut from 52 cents to just under 28 cents a, a quarter. And that's what it's been for the past two quarters that it's been paid out. Again, I'm not going to look at the financials in this episode. Maybe I'll do that in the next one. But let's quickly look at the charts. And of course, charts show what's happened in the past not necessarily what will happen in the future, but it can be an indication of trends. So let's look at an AT&T share going back to July 20th, 1984. That was about the time when the company was broken up and the actual AT&T that we have now is descended from a baby bell that then bought the former parent company and adopted their name. I'm well aware of the corporate history. You don't need to contact me about it. But let's say that for our purposes, you bought back then and split adjusted, it was $3.74 in 1984. Today, it's $20.66 a share, an increase of $16.92, or a little over 452%. Yeah, that sounds like a reasonable increase until you consider the amount of time that it's been. It's been almost exactly 38 years since this particular security was issued. So we'll take 452.1%, divide it by 38, and you get an 11.9% return. Now I have to admit that that, along with the addition of dividends, is a fairly respectable return and probably matches or perhaps even exceeds the return of the Dow Jones Industrial Average during that time period. But look at the chart. And for much of the time, the stock has gone sideways with a trend gradually going down, both from the big spike up years ago, as well as, say, the past five year period. Let's take a look at that chart. In the past five years, AT&T is down nearly 25%. So that's roughly a 5% decrease annually. You are getting a 7% dividend during many of those years. So ultimately, you're netting a 2% return per year at a time when the stock market was doing quite well. For instance, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was up nearly 45% in five years. That doesn't include any dividends, so that's approximately a 9% increase without dividends, while you were netting 2% on AT&T with their dividends included. And of course, at that time, inflation was about 2%. So inflation adjusted returns for AT&T were basically zero. And then of course, earlier this calendar year, they cut the dividend by quite a bit. And the stock continues to have a generally downward direction, although year to date, the stock is up 7.66%. And that's when year to date, most stocks and most indices are, are down, indicating a bear market. So that is good for AT&T, at least year to date. Again, I'm not looking at the fundamentals and I'm not looking at the big debt load that AT&T has. Since I already have Verizon and Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF charts saved in this file, I'm going to close out by showing them by comparison just for your information, not arguing over which investment may be better than the others. I'll have some links in the show notes. Remember, before investing in anything, do your own research for multiple sources of 
information. Don't just look at charts, but look at the fundamentals and make sure that ultimately you have a well diversified long term focus for your portfolio. Remember, I'm not giving investment advice here, just entertainment. That's all for today. What do you think? Please leave a comment below. And again, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button for this video, as well as subscribe button for this channel. Thanks for watching and good luck in investing.